Welcome to another webinar for uh, Lux OG. Today we will have the speaker Rodrigo Mufalani talking about the Oracle multi-tenant uh, 90C consolidation. Okay. Uh, about us, uh, our numbers in eight months, uh, 96 registered users on the portal, uh, six, six articles uh, published. Uh, about several topics, exadata, uh, zero data loss, uh, database, uh, cloud, and the other things, middleware, and the others. Uh, five webinars, it's uh, executed. Uh, more than 13,000 pages views, and more than 6,000 visitors. Okay, uh, now it's up to you, Rodrigo, uh, and the, the final of the presentation, it's show uh, uh, about information about the Lux OG event, okay? Okay. One more time, I forgot. One minute, about the <laughs> members. Me, Carlos Magno, Fernando Simon, Leonardo Lopes, and the speaker, Rodrigo Mufalani. Rodrigo, it's now the control with you. Okay. Are you seeing my screen? Yeah, it's possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, uh, good oven. Uh, is the the word for good night in Luxembourgish as we are presenting to Luxembourg Oracle user group. Uh, somebody is with open mic. Uh, no, uh, I think I am uh, hear my my voice, but with uh, some delay. Okay, uh, let's continue. So, good oven, uh, good night, uh, bon soirée to everybody uh, listening to us. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here on Lux OG uh, again to speak about Oracle multi tenant consolidation in Oracle 19C. Okay. Um, disclaimer this, the, the post, the presentation are uh, my views, not my employee. Uh, it's up to me. So, uh, I proceed and the company that I work for. About me, I am a principal DB architect at I proceed Luxembourg, also an Oracle certified master, uh, an Oracle ACE member since 2009 and president and founder of uh, Lux OG and board member of uh, Guob. Um, here, uh, I slide about the Oracle ACE program um, I am an Oracle ACE member, uh, as I said before. There are some levels here, uh, Oracle ACE Director, Oracle ACE Associate, and uh, it's a award given by Oracle to the uh, people that share uh, knowledge around the world in presentations, uh, with blogs, with uh, videos with uh, almost everything on social media so if you have interest in participate of the program follow uh, the link and you can nominate yourself or someone else that you consider uh, a great um, evangelist of oracle around the world uh, this is another source of uh, knowledge is the oracle um, sorry, Aura World. It's a, a magazine, a free online magazine. You can download um, the content. 
So uh, probably we will see a lot of uh, good content since uh, Oracle Apex development, uh, articles about cloud, about uh, engineering systems, Java, everything related to Oracle technology. <clears throat> So, Auto World Magazine, some more details what you can find on the um, uh, magazine. Okay, uh, visit www.autoworld.org. Subscribe and keep you uh, posted about everything on uh, the news about Oracle stuff. So, let's begin. Um, what and why Oracle multi-tenant? So uh, it's not a, a brand new thing, but uh, as Oracle promised to, to get rid of the non-container uh, architecture since Oracle 12C, I guess on Oracle 20 or maybe on the next release, it to be uh, a true sentence. There is, no, there, is uh, there will be no more Oracle non CDB architecture. Uh, as I tested, since uh, until the version 19C, it's possible to create a non container database. Okay. But uh, I don't know if Oracle will kill the non CDB architecture. They promise to deprecate. Um, they promised to um, um, don't use this architecture anymore, but still uh, usable on 19C version. But from 19C onwards, you can create uh, until three user PDBs, different from uh, version 18C or 12C, release one and release two, as you are not. Um, allowed to create more than one PDB into a CDB uh, because of license, because a multi-tenant uh, license, uh, it's uh, a feature that you may uh, pay a part, and uh, you may know, you must pay a part. <laughs> and um, uh, before 19C, you should just create one uh, PDB that's called single tenant, to avoid uh, violate this license of mood tenant if you don't have uh, the license as well. On Oracle 19C, it's possible to create three PDBs on a container database without violate this license, which is a good thing for us DBAs. Uh, sorry. The, I don't explain why. So Oracle uh, had developed uh, this multi-tenant architecture because of cloud. That's why the Oracle version changed his name from G, that must be grid, I mean hack, to C. So from 11G to 12C, uh, Oracle start to plan uh, to play with cloud. So 12C means Oracle ready for cloud. So Oracle 12C uh, came with this new architecture. It's not so new right now because it was released in 2013. Uh, but uh, I think as Oracle will deprecate um, non-CDB architecture, uh, you get more popular uh, in every single database from 19C and onwards. <clears throat> okay. Um, so uh, about architecture okay as you can see on this uh, slide we have on the new architecture we have a, a CDB that stands for container database and you have 
at least one single PDB uh, attached to the when you create is uh, the PDB seed. It's mandatory to have PDB seed on a container database, and then you can create your um, user, uh, let's say, your pluggable database for your applications. This is a diagram uh, of an Oracle release uh, 12C R2 and onwards. Because on release one, we don't have this uh, application route, which is uh, for development. So basically, you have a container CDB and multiple PDBs. Oh, my. I did a mess here, sorry. Um, you have multiple PDBs attached uh, on this uh, only one CDB, okay? But you uh, need to, to understand the concept of container because to navigate between the, PD, the pluggable databases on your CDB, you uh, refer to a container. So the command to navigate will be outer pluggable, um, outer session set container equal the name of the container. So in the beginning, you will be um, a little bit confused about this, but uh, since you start to use it, you get uh, familiar, it will be easy to understand and navigate. Okay, another possibility is connected directly to the PDB that you intend to connect um, through um, TNS Oracle uh, network. Okay, with alias and listener and everything. So, uh, what is uh, application uh, container? I never used it in production uh, so far. Uh, but it's a, a new thing introduced on Oracle 12C release 2, uh, where the application developers can install um, uh, applications and then uh, synchronize uh, multiple PDBs belonging to the same application route. So with uh, the begin install and end install commands, uh, and begin upgrade and end upgrade commands, you can uh, install the, the applications, which means uh, create tables, everything, procedures, everything. And then you can launch the common outer pluggable database application, uh, the name of uh, your container, sync, or uh, all sync. Okay. Um, as I said, uh, the deprecation of a non-CDB architecture uh, happened on 12C, but is not supported so far. So one thing is deprecated, another thing is disupported. Okay, so as I said, probably on 20C or maybe 21C. I don't know if Oracle will keep to use this C on the name. Uh, you may not. Uh, have any more known container database. So uh, on this screen, if you can check, there is a flag uh, uh, that you can mark to create a container database or not. It means that, excuse me, <coughs> um, the non-container uh, architecture is not the supported so far, okay? Uh, architecture as uh, we are used to. So uh, it means Oracle uh, 11G and older versions. We have this architecture, non-CDB. You have a lot of applications and a lot of databases. Uh, it's common in our environments to manage more than 300 databases depend of the, the size of the company. So with uh, multi-tenant, 
uh, architecture, the efforts to manage those databases will be reduced. It means less databases to patch, less databases to upgrade, less databases to maintain. Okay, but the um, multi-tenant architecture will create for you new challenges, new things that doesn't happen in a non-container architecture. Okay, so this is the difference uh, between the non-CDB architecture and uh, CDB architecture. You have just a one huge uh, CDB and you can consolidate a lot of PDBs on it. Um, it is a completely isolated environment, so you can uh, share some, uh, you, not, not share, but you can plug different applications, different um, information in the same container database. Uh, you see that Oracle will change the, it will uh, enhance the multi-tenant architecture to get more uh, difference between the PDBs. You can control for each version, you can control more and more the particularities of uh, each scenario, like uh, uh, character set, some parameters, everything we will see um, later. So uh, the key for consolidation, if you uh, are planning to use uh, multi-tenant architecture, you must have a container database created. So it means a root CDB and a PDB seed on it, okay? PDB, it's a special, uh, PDB seed is a special uh, PDB that remains uh, most of time in read only on your um, pluggable database. But time to time, you can open it with a special command with a special hidden session parameter. Okay. So, uh, how can we create pluggable databases? We can create by cloning it from PDBC, uh, PDBC from local or remote uh, databases, and uh, they can be, if they are not uh, CDBs, they can be converted to uh, PDB mode using a special script you can launch uh, under RDBMS, Oracle Home, RDBMS admin. There is a script called non-CDB to PDB. That script take more or less, depend of the, the, the speed of the machine, one hour, 50 minutes to, to finish. It creates some data dictionary uh, on uh, PDB, okay? So we can also create uh, PDBs by snapshots, uh, but this is just for um, engineering systems. I think it's just uh, available for Exadata. I'm not sure if it's available for ODA. Uh, you can use snapshot copy of PDBs and uh, refreshable clone of PDBs, but just for engineering systems. Also, you can create um, PDB by plugging it. You can uh, unplug and plug a PDB uh, or a known CDB as a PDB. You can use uh, full transportable table space. You can check uh, the blog of Mike Dietrich. There is a lot of content about it. As Oracle started um, to migrate from 11G database to 12C, uh, they, they introduced this feature. It's very useful. Also, it's uh, considered 
nowadays to use a data pump. You can use it. Uh, I blogged about uh, one a parameter that uh, convert all tables in no logging mode, and then uh, after it changed it back to logging. So if you are not using a data guard, you can use data pump in uh, speeding up with uh, transforming parameter. Also, you can use Golden Gate to replicate the database to a PDB, um, create a PDB by relocate uh, it from one uh, container to another, or you can create a PDB as a proxy PDB. That's kind of a view. You can create a, a PDB and have uh, some other PDB. Top features by version. On 12C release one, we uh, Oracle introduced the feature multi-tenant that we are talking about today. And uh, on also on 12C release one, where the Oracle introduced the, the capacity to control the resources, because it's uh, the, this feature, as I said, was built for. Uh, consolidation. So probably you have multiple databases with multiple um, priorities on your environment. So you may want to uh, put more resources, allocate more resources to one PDB or another PDB. So to achieve uh, this, you can use a CDB resource plan, okay, to control the, the PDBs, the priorities, okay? And also, uh, Oracle introduced the PDB resource plan. Uh, it's uh, quite common as we are used uh, before, okay? We can control uh, all resources into uh, inside the PDB. So you, uh, the PDB resource plan, it's more to control uh, consumer groups, everything. The CDB resource plan is to control how the PDBs uh, will behave on your environment, okay? Um, also, the full transportable table space to help you on migrate uh, your databases to pluggable databases. Uh, here, okay, I will highlight this. On Oracle release one, it's uh, no, uh, it's not possible to clone a PDB without put it on read-only mode, okay? Because they share the same uh, undo table spaces. So, on. The, the biggest feature on Travel C release two, on my opinion, it's the ability of create the, of clone a PDB, a source PDB, uh, without put it on read only mode. Okay, uh, for that you need to enable the local undo. If you uh, take a look on the presentation of Davy on LuxOG channel on YouTube. Uh, they explain uh, a lot about this feature, okay? So, um, another good thing, it's PDB archive. Um, it's better for managing and uh, unplug and plug PDBs, okay? Also, it's possible to flashback uh, pluggable databases um, in 12C release 2. And another uh, huge enhancement was PDB char set because on 12C release 1, it's not possible to have uh, different char set PDBs. So to consolidate a lot of environments, you may have um, different uh, source databases with different char sets. So uh, on total, 31 features were added since uh, 12C release 1 to 12C release 2. I just highlighted the, the most impacting features, at least for me, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, on 18C, which stands for 12C, the 
two. Oracle did, in my opinion, a mess uh, changing this naming convention. Okay, to then uh, it may um, make a lot of sense because they, they manage the, the versions, everything, but all customers are complaining about that. There is no one that talk about this change, they not complain a little bit. So behind the scenes, Oracle 18C stands for 12202, 19C 12203. Uh, I don't know, but uh, maybe 12C, it's uh, 12204. I don't know if they, they will change the, the release for 13, 13. I don't know. So uh, on 18C, we have a SN database cloning. Uh, for people who manage databases with the TDE, Transparent Data Encryption, now it's possible to create a key store for each PDB. Create a user-defined master key for each PDB. Uh, DBCA allows you to uh, clone PDBs and also 31 features added. Um, top features on 19C, relocation, uh, relocation of a PDB to another CDB using DBCA in silent mode. Uh, Oracle introduced the ADDM report uh, per PDB and also automated uh, PDB relocation, uh, relocation, relocation. Workload capture and uh, database replay in a PDB. I never tested, but uh, sounds nice. So um, as I said, each version Oracle uh, will enhance the possibility to uh, defer one PDB to another one. So. In Oracle 19C, uh, 19C dot, uh, 19.3, there is um, 2037 parameters uh, that you can change in PDB level, which is really awesome. So it means that you can put more uh, more uh, PDVs with uh, differences between them, okay, among them. Best aspects. So with, um, in my opinion, the best of uh, multi-tenancy is you don't have to change the application code to use it. So your application will connect into uh, uh, a name using a port in the service name, okay? As you probably define in old uh, architecture, it should remain the same. So you don't need to change nothing and just change, okay, for sure, the address, maybe the service name to, listen and to connect into a PDB. So uh, mood tenants, it's completely uh, rack aware. So it works very well in hack. Um, also, it works uh, well. I, can, I will show uh, what I say. It's not very well with data guard, but it uh, works uh, with data guard but uh, it will uh, um, lead in some extra maintenance as you are planning to plug a PDB on a data guard mode. If you create a PDB, it's okay. But if you plug a PDB, you need uh, to do some tricks that I will show you. So it's less effort on administration side because you administrate many as one and uh, simplifies some daily tasks of DBAs, okay? So uh, 
another thing for DBAs are not familiar with the mood senate architecture, uh, you face a new layer of uh, views on data dictionary that's uh, um, on root container that uh, call it CDB underscore everything. So there will be CDB underscore tables that you, when you have all columns of uh, DBA tables plus the um, con ID column. So get used uh, with this new layer of uh, views from data dictionary for all the DBAs. How to migrate, okay? Um, as I said before, you can use data pump. For me, it's one of the easiest uh, way to migrate. Full transportable table space is not a thing that you can use. It's very um, powerful. Uh, you can use cloning. You can use convert non-CDB to PDB. You can use Golden Gate, or you can use DB upgrade in text mode. You can check the link of Mike Dietrich that I put on the presentation. I will share the presentation uh, and also the video uh, on LuxOG uh, website uh, and LuxOG channel on YouTube. Okay. So, uh, real life bad experience, but I will show the workaround for you. Okay. So, uh, first issue, I will show two issues here. When you create a PDB in a data guard mode, all data files are copied to the data guard. Everything is managed. You can uh, define the parameters to convert uh, the file name for the new on, on the data guard machine, probably the, the name uh, file system um, is different. So you can use data file convert, um, file name convert, Okay, uh, Andre is uh, sharing with me some questions. I will answer the questions on the final, okay? So, um, back again on track. So when you create the, a PDB on a data guard environment, it will be automatic, full uh, compatible uh, with data guard. So data guard is aware about the creation of data files, but the temporary file will be not created. So as you can see here, we have on my production database that I, I, I call it OSCL CDB as a primary on top of the screen, we have 15 data files uh, and one temp file. No, no, there is more, one more because I have one for CDB, uh, CDB root, one for PDB seed, and one for the uh, one PDB that I have here. So when I create um, a new uh, PDB, Oracle will not replicate the temp file. So here, so far, so good. We have the primary database. There is just one unique PDB on it, called ORCL, and also PDB seed. So here it's my primary, and here my physical standby. Okay, with the same amount of files on those. So, as we can see here, my data guard is protected by broker. So everything it's fine. So why I see the message success on the final, okay? I created a folder on both uh, machines. On, in this case, I am using the same machine, but I, I created the folder for both databases. So uh, everything is set up. 
it's, ta it's time to create my PDB one on the primary database. So here I am creating the PDB and also open it. So I issue the command uh, create pluggable database and also alt pluggable database open. <clears throat> okay, now I have 19 uh, files on my primary database. Okay, but I just have 18 files on my standby database. Okay, and as you can see here, there is a file called temp 01 2019 05 31 blah blah blah. And here, this file uh, is missing for the for my pluggable database. This is easy to solve, okay, but you you need to to take care to not um, to not uh, violate the Active Data Guard license. So, what I, I do here is uh, issue. Oops, just a moment. I don't know what I put the, the switch over on this this uh, slide. Uh, I will ignore this slide. I will not talk about this. But here, uh, broker is not aware the the, uh, the data file, the temp file missing uh, will not uh, be a problem. Okay, now I know because I put the the switch over. I did the uh, switch over just for test purpose, and I, I print this slide there, sorry. Um, here I have the 19 uh, data files and temp file. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I found, so, um, if I do uh, on to correct the situation, I must connect on the standby database and also connect on the pluggable database and try to create the temp file. So, but the problem is my database is not open for this operation. So, what I need to do is stop. The, the apply of redo, so I can connect on um, DG MGL and issue the common edit database, the name of the database, set state, apply off. It will stop to apply the archive logs on standby. Okay. And then I um, put my database in a read only mode and also put the pluggable database into a read-only mode. So uh, here on the top of the screen, uh, the open mode for my CDB is read-only. So I will not violate any license here. Take care if you see read-only uh, with apply, it active data guarded working. So take care of it, do not pay extra license, okay? If you don't uh, intend to use. Uh, okay. Active Data Guard, it's a really good product and I, I suggest you to take uh, a look on these features, the capable of this feature. So uh, here I can open the database uh, in the pluggable database in read only mode. It's just a matter of uh, issue, the outer table space temp, add temp file, the name of temp file, and the problem will be solved. So now I have 19 files on one side and 19 files on the another side. So after that, I can re enable the apply on my um, data guard and it will be synchronized, 
okay so other thing that you can uh, may face depend of the version that you are running to is uh, a long time to start up rack um, instance using pluggable database for that I have experienced some um, really amount of time to start a rack with I think uh, 20 databases or 30 databases I don't remember exactly but the workaround for that is open once one instance per time so you open one instance open all pluggable databases on it then you open another the another instance or if you have more than two instances open one each time and open the pluggable databases on it okay don't try to open all the instance all the pluggable databases at the same time you may face uh, this bug depending on the version that you are running to on it your system. Uh, another thing that I, I face it is parallel execution of data patch because you may uh, want to apply data patch on a specific PDBs. So if you run multiple data patch on multiple CDBs because you are in the middle of a, a, a patching window, you will face this error, you need to run data patch in serial mode. What I mean by serial is one CDB per time, okay? One database per time. Um, okay, this is interesting. You, if you create a PDB as I show uh, on the scenario before of this, data guard, you'll be aware of this. But if you plug a PDB on your uh, system with a data guard, your data guard will crash. Okay. So here I am using PDB archive. So uh, I will demonstrate with the PDB one. I close the PDB one. I unplug the PDB1 into a PDB archive, so home oracle pdb1.pdb, you can name it as you want. Uh, before, on the, uh, that of existence of PDB archives, Oracle will create a XML file and uh, and uh, XML file uh, and the, this XML file will point to the data files of your PDB. So um, I create here the um, pluggable database. Sorry, create, no. I drop, just a moment. Um, and uh, I unplug the pluggable database and then I drop the, the PDB1 as you show uh, on the slide. There is no more PDB1 on my CDB control files. Uh, there is not uh, on my, there's not, it's not my part. It's not part of my database anymore. Okay. So, uh, so far, so good. Everything will be dropped on DataGuard uh, automatically. So DataGuard is aware of this operation, no problem. So uh, as I show here on DataGuard or SCL STB, there is no more PDB1. So far, so good. Here, uh, it's a part of uh, my standby database alert log. So as you can see, Oracle get rid of the files, everything will be cleaned. <sighs> now the fun. So here I am creating a, a pluggable database named PDB1 using the archive PDB uh, that I created before. So 
uh, as you said, um, as you can see, the pluggable database will be created. I can open it and also I save state that you can uh, use for save states uh, during the startup and shutdown. Immediately, my data guard configuration crashed. Redo apply is stopped. Okay. So uh, now you start to investigate what happened. My data guard uh, simply start uh, stopped to working. And as you will see on your data guard environment, it creates uh, just one single file uh, for PDB1, each, uh, which is system uh, data file belonging to a system table spaces on, on PDB1, as I indicated by this red arrow. So when you take a look on the data guard um, archive log, um, archive log of data guard alert log, you see that uh, a lot of errors and the um, media recover uh, stopped. Okay. It's not uh, rock, uh, rocket science to solve this issue, but you need to take care of some uh, aspects. So first thing, PDBs are just a bunch of data files uh, in table spaces, not much uh, more uh, on that, okay? So when you uh, launch a plug command, what happened? The control file of your data guard is not aware. They have no clue about the, the, the new PDB data files. That's why to solve this issue, you need to recreate the control file on the standby. For that, we issue the command alter database create standby control file and may, uh, with the name. Okay. Uh, here, what I do is shut down my standby database, then I start up mount, no, in no mount mode, and then I recover the control, standby control file that I created on the previous step. As you can see, not uh, rocket science, okay? It's a common thing for DBAs. Then you mount your database, and then you can catalog the data files uh, on uh, the folder. So as to, to inform to the control file of the standby that there is uh, existing data files on your uh, file system or your ASM, okay? So now my control file it's uh, aware about my files, okay? But I still have problems on my data guard configuration. Why? Because um, <clears throat> because my uh, I restored the control file, but not the pluggable database data files. So I can issue a command restore pluggable database from service pointing to a TNS entry. So with what Oracle will do, it will copy from network the files for my PDB to the data guard. On um, 18C version, I, I, I wrote uh, an article uh, I hope it will be published soon. Uh, you can restore uh, standby database from service, okay? Which is very nice. In one single command, you can restore all the files. But depending on the size of the data guard, uh, it can uh, not be a solution uh, because you need to copy everything through the network. Okay, so here, as I restore the pluggable database PDB from service, Oracle restore 
my data files. Then automatically my uh, MRP process started and then voila, my <coughs> <laughs> my configuration it's working again so i will be able to see success and now i have a lot of uh, data files and my temp file on pluggable database on my container 5 on the data guard okay and just for testing purposes i launched a switch over to uh, OSL STB. As you can see, everything uh, is working fine. Everything worked fine. And now OSC, OSL STB is my new primary database. So then I switch over back to the OSL CDB. And again, everything worked fine as designed. Now uh, it's time to question and answers. So Andre probably send me some questions. I will more than happy to reply. Yes, uh, I believe there's three questions. Mm. Okay, let me check the questions because, okay. Uh, Here I have, okay. How SQL CLI uh, work with PDB? Just pointing to the username, password, and you can use maybe Easy Connect host name. Uh, let me just check here. Just a moment. Okay. SQL CLI The guy is talking about um, SQL CL, the SQL this SQL CL, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the same. The, as far as I can see here, it's the same uh, method as you are using SQL Plus. It's username, password, uh, at, server name, port, and instance name. As you are uh, referring to a PDB, you can use uh, slash the PDB name. Uh, the same the same way as you uh, run into a known uh, CDB architecture. Uh, the second question is: uh, If we create a new PDB on the last patched CDB, uh, the have patch. Okay, I got it. So when you create it, uh, a new uh, PDB on the patched CDB, or if, if you plug uh, a PDB on uh, uh, this DCDB that you patched recently or with the last patch, you can you can you you must use data patch to to apply the patch on the the PDB. Okay, uh, I, I experienced differences uh, versions. So data patch, it's nice. It's a very intelligent tool. If you are running into a, a lower release, data patch will recognize it and will hold back the the other the 
uh, how can I say, a major patch for you. Okay. Uh, and the, the okay. Uh, what is application PDB? Okay, as I said uh, in the beginning of the the, the presentation, uh, application PDB, it's a thing designed. It's it's work like a, a small container database, but the PDB is plugged on it. It um, will be works like uh, an application uh, point of view. So when you use the let me check here on my presentation. Uh, here, you you use uh, the begin install and um, end install and begin upgrade and end upgrade and you can create objects that will be shared among these uh, PDBs here. Let me show in the oh my not no I am not here 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 so uh, to reply to you when you create uh, uh, an application oh. when you create an application uh, hood on your container database and you create pluggable database on the application root, everything that you create here will be replicated to those guys. Okay, you can use the, the command begin install, end install, begin upgrade and upgrade, and then you can sync the, the PDB applications. I hope that I answered your question. Uh, how about the time, Andrea? Uh, uh, 50, 53 minutes. Okay. So, uh, 53 minutes. Okay. So, um, let's go to the end of. Nope. It's better like this. So, any more questions? No, the questions finish. And mm. check one more time. Uh, no. Okay. So, if you have um, any uh, further questions, please drop me an email. Reach me on Twitter. I shared my my contacts on the the beginning of the presentation. That will be on the Lux OG uh, portal soon, and also the video of the presentation will be uh, online on YouTube. Uh, in a couple of minutes. Okay, so just uh, reach me and I will be more than happy to reply if I know the answer. <laughs> okay, no, I'm just kidding. Okay. Um, as you probably uh, heard about it, we will uh, in 28th of March, we will run the first uh, physical event here on Luxembourg from Lux OG. So be our guest, uh, come to Luxembourg. Uh, the event will be, um, will happen on Windhoff. It's uh, on east side of Luxembourg, close to Belgian border and um, see you there. Okay. Uh, also the Kaufel papers is open. Uh, you can um, check on Luke's OG website. If you want to share your knowledge with us uh, during the whole uh, day of fun, please uh, submit your presentation. There is uh, already some uh, presentations, uh, some uh, really cool guys already submitted about uh, different topics. So probably you see some um, sessions about Apex, uh, engineer systems, uh, Oracle 19C, uh, and a lot of more uh, cool 
subjects oracle cloud so it will be awesome i hope to see you there and thank you one more time to listen to me uh, i will try to do that in the local language merci fir mac nozal sharing adi it's a luxembourgish for thank you to listen to me and goodbye <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, Rodrigo, for your presentation. Uh, one more time, don't forget that your call pa uh, for papers is open, as well as the registration for the event for uh, Lux Og and 20th of March. And see you uh, at the next webinar. Thank you very much.